What's up, kids? Hope everybody is super well. Hey, this is a really good question and kind of a funny um, question for me because I just kind of wrote the answer right there. How do you come up with content? That's a really good one that comes up all the time. People ask, that's, I don't know if there's a most common question I get, but that's got to be near the top of the list. How do you come up with content for, like I do Facebook lives and all kind of stuff like this multiple times a week. I used to do this every day when I was first starting out. And that was probably just kind of getting used to doing the camera thing, uh, like being on lives. I think it's a really important skill. Um, and I'm not the best at it. Obviously, there's people who are way better than me, but just being comfortable looking at a lens and talking is a big deal. So I used to this every day, all right? Um, multiple people. I mean, there's so many coaches who say you publish every day until you kind of get good at it. But then you're like, oh my gosh, but then what do I do? What do I talk about? How many things can I write? How many things can I do lives on? How many... You know, IGTV 90 second gigs can you do? How much can you throw out on YouTube or Clubhouse or wherever you are? You're going to run out of stuff to say. Well, the answer is in the title of this post. I do live Q&As. I think that is one of the simplest ways to handle content in whatever format you're working in. There's a lot of questions that you know the answers to, and it's really not that hard to throw educated answers out there to people who just need to know the steps that you know. So some people kind of try to make it magical and they have like, do you have to have the right headline? Do you have to have the right subtext? I mean, but how do you, you know, make it a good hook? Is there seven things that are my secret sauce to whatever? You really don't have to get into all that. I mean, it's nice if you're, if you're able to do that, but I really just handle live Q and A. And I do that sometimes live, like right here with Junaid, awesome. Um, good to see you, man. Ask the audience for what they want to learn. A absolutely. And if you don't have an audience yet, I mean, Junaid, you've got an awesome audience because you're such an expert and so well known already and just producing such great studio like work, like your technology pieces, how you set things up, how you build people's like online presence. You obviously have a following that's following that. But you know, remember Junaid when we were first starting out? You and me both. There's this well, what do they want to know about? I mean, there's no way that I know something they want to know, right? That's what we think. But then we realize, oh my gosh, yeah, there is. Like there's so much that I know that they don't know yet. Even the simplest things. Like Junaid does home studio setups, like really professional. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually standing out in our garage right now. Not this kind of home studio setup. Um, but I mean, simple lighting questions for Junaid. For me, Simple business systems questions or how to build a mastermind, how to do a high ticket coaching program, how to prospect, how to sell, how to build content for your teaching. Things that like come very naturally for me that don't always come naturally for your audience. So what is it that comes naturally for you? You've already cracked the code on lots of things. And if you don't feel comfortable doing a live Q&A session like this, it's easy just to write a few paragraphs. Or if you want to make sure it's more curated and you're kind of worried what you look like live, then you can just always turn your phone on, try to do a little 60, 30 second, 90 second video with some really quick, like, what's your tip of the day? How do you stay motivated? How do you do your thing? How do you build a, a prospecting system? How do you market? How do you sell? How do you hire and fire staff? How do you find a VA? What is it that you know about? How do you motivate people? How do you raise kids? How do you have a family? How do you, you know, train pets? What is it that you do? And, and talk about that because I promise there are little tricks and tips that you know that I don't know. Um, Pat, what's up? Uh, what do you know about attitudinal healing? See, great question, Pat. That's a really good question. I don't know much about attitudinal healing because I would probably need to Google that. And is that like, do I shifting my attitude? Does that help me heal as a person? Um, like that's kind of where I would go with that. Like, is that what that means? But the point is, Pat, that's a really good question. Like, I don't know the answer to that, but, but as somebody who's constantly working on my own mindset and leading a bunch of other people, like that sounds like something really meaningful to me. And that's where it's so cool. Cause you know something about that, that I don't know. You, you know, a lot about that probably that I don't know if you've already Googled it, you know, what I know. So for all of us, we have our little expertise, we have our passions, we have the thing we want to teach, we want to sell and want to lead a mastermind group on, let's say, or something like that. You know so much more than most of the people around you, just because it's been your passion, your hobby, and it's easy to just create content around that. So a simple um, thing you can do if you're just getting started with, with delivering and building content is to 
like just simply, this is going to sound overly simple, but it, it really works this way. Just Google key topics about your expertise, your area of interest. And when you know you start Googling something, it like auto fills in, like you get 10 other like ideas of what people commonly Google about that topic. Like if I typed in add to attitudinal healing for Pat's question there, um, we can chat on the 29th. <laughs> awesome, Pat. I'm glad we're already scheduled. That's so great. Um, so I'm uh, looking forward to it, Pat. I never look ahead on my calendar. Um, and uh, that sounds really fun. Um, so um, the the thing is you can do like if I typed in add to no healing and I wanted to talk more about that, um, it'd be super simple to like see what the common questions are that people type into Google. Great place to start your live Q&A. And you can start typing in all kind of topics from there and you'll get so many topics you can talk about in something written or something live. Um, Junaid, my wife always asks me, how would I bring clients to, um, how would I bring clients to work with? That's, I mean, that's great. If, that's, your, that's a great, see, that's a great question because it's a question that she's asking you. It's a common question. Here's, here's one more point I think is worth mentioning. If you have the stomach for it, go live. All right, go live on Clubhouse, go live on Instagram, go live on Facebook. If you have access to going live on LinkedIn, um, if that's in your membership, go live on, like go live somewhere, uh, YouTube, wherever you want to do this. Live is, is rough and gritty. The algorithms on most social media platforms prioritize live feeds, which is really cool. It's helpful from an SEO standpoint for on that systems um, algorithm, I guess, and it was SEO, but just an algorithm standpoint. But it also, it also really helps you as a communicator get more confident and demystify the content creation piece. Often we try to make things so perfect we don't actually get it done and we don't actually release the content or it gets overwhelming or you're like, I'm going to release content every day or five days a week or three days a week or whatever. But then it gets to be so burdensome trying to produce something, get the perfect headline, get the perfect text, get the perfect image, get the perfect video edits, get everything just right, take out, re-say it, re-go over it over and over and over again, whatever. Going live just kind of takes the mystery out of that. And you begin to realize that adding real value to the community you serve is not about being perfect. It's about being there. It's really about being there and relevant and being honest and authentic and helping people answer the questions they want to answer, get the solutions they want to get. It's not as much about being perfect. So if you can and you can stomach it, even if you're nervous, I used to be, I'm an introvert. And so going live for me isn't the easiest thing to do. And yet it's worth it. And and now that I've done it for so long, um, not meaning 10 years long, but just a couple of years, um, it, it got really easy. After about five or six months of going live five days a week, I promised I'd do it like every day, seven days a week, and then I got out of control. Oh my gosh, it just kind of wore me down. So then I went to five days a week. Totally doable. And then uh, then three days a week. Totally doable. Um, hey, baby. I got. We have a cat here in our... Hey, girl. And this is our cat. Her name is Baby. She hangs out with me anytime I'm outside. If y'all see many of my lives, I'm outside. There's usually... You know, this cat, baby, or Blue hanging out with me. So um, anyway, going live is a really handy way to do this. It gets you past a lot of fear, past a lot of concerns of what if it's not going to work, um, past a lot of like, what if it's not perfect enough? I mean, I'm in my carport, right? There is my cat. It's not that big a deal. You got this. Hope that helps. Talk to you all soon. Have a great one. Bye.